if you're an organization that uses a lot of different sites to list your job postings and it's hard to keep track of them all and consolidate them in one place, we're going to show you a couple of reasons why you might want to use Office 365 to do that. Hey everyone, my name's Mitch, and today, like I said, we're gonna talk about why you should add Office 365 to your hiring funnel. So if you're like us, we post our jobs on sites like LinkedIn and Indeed, and each of those have their own way to manage candidates, but we didn't have a good way to see across all those different sites and keep track of them in a long-term basis. So we built a couple different tools on Office 365 that helps us keep track of them all in one place and manage them according to the process that we want to take with employees. And so we're going to dive into three reasons why you might want to use Office 365 in your hiring funnel. Before we dive in, I want to let you know that we create content on a regular basis. So if you want to be up to date on the most recent videos that we create, be sure to subscribe down below and uh, let's jump into it. So the first reason you might want to try this is it's super flexible and you're in control. With tools like Power Automate, Power Apps, and all the other Office 365 suite, there's so many possibilities that you can create with custom logic and custom processes that fit whatever you need. A couple ideas are automated emails. So it's really great when someone applies to you, they send you an email, here's my resume, that they get some kind of feedback saying, hey, we got it. Uh, we'll be in touch and thanks for submitting. It gives them a, a positive experience and doesn't make it seem like they're just throwing it into a black hole somewhere. Another idea is you might get a lot of different emails to that, that careers email, whatever it is. You might want to put some approvals based on that that you can go in and double check. Do I really want to add this person? Is this a legitimate email? And putting some gates in place for you to just double check that it's legitimate and you want to put it in whatever process, some formal process that you've created. And the last idea with, with this is rejection emails. So we haven't taken it this far, but if you interview someone and you have them in your list and it turns out you don't want to hire them, you want to pass, you can actually create custom actions that you can just click a little drop down and say reject and you can build conditional emails that depending on what they applied for, what phase of the process you're in, that they can get an email saying, hey, sorry, we're not going to be moving forward with your application. So hopefully that just gives you a couple ideas of how powerful this system can be and, and how customizable it can be for whatever you need. The next benefit you get is it creates a central place for you to go and access history and look at all the past candidates that you've had. So when you use some of the third party systems like what we talked about, information can get dispersed pretty easily and it can be hard to track down all the information for a specific candidate. So what's better than having a big master list that has all the information you want in need for a specific candidate. Uh, we also found that some of the third party tools can't track all the different fields that we might want to keep track of. So if someone has a required salary that they need in order to make the move, it'd be great to store that alongside. We found that to be a shortcoming of some of the other tools. So you can think of other possibilities that you could store in there, like feedback about interviews or just different requirements that they might need. They need to know an answer by a certain date and just keeping track of what, what phase they're in according to your specific process of hiring. Also, if you use a tool like Microsoft Lists, you can create different views for your candidates. So you could look at candidates that are in, in the funnel, for example. So it'll look at a certain status that they're in and say, these are the people we're actively talking to. Or maybe you have a field that says we would consider this person in the future and you want to go look back through that list. You can create a filter that looks for those specific statuses and say, here's all the people that, hey, if they come knocking on our door in the future or we're looking for a specific need, we might reach out to them and see if they're looking for a move at that point in time. Also, some of those third party systems, it's hard to give people access when you need. And with as many different systems that you might be using with the job listings, you need to give another person on your team access to all these individual things. It'd be great on your central list of people. You can just add them to the SharePoint list. They're already in your tenant and you can just go in the security settings and add them to that list and they have access and that's all there is to it. They, you don't have to do anything much more complex than that. 
Last point why you might want to try this is it's free. If you already have an Office 365 subscription, you might as well try it out. You don't have to pay anything extra. You just need to invest a little bit of time to build out whatever process that you think you want to uh, use to facilitate your hiring funnel. So get in there, try to build some lists, build automations around it, automate emails, and all the things we've talked about, and you won't have to pay anything. So go try it out. So to close it out, I wanted to show you just an example of the things that we've been talking about today. Here's a flow that we've created as an autoresponder to our careers email. So if you send us an email to careers at bulb.digital, we detect when that happens. And then we put a little bit of a delay to say, uh, give a 40-minute delay, something that's not instantaneous and doesn't make you feel like you're in an automated system, if that makes sense. And then we have some conditions just to check and make sure that it's not uh, any other systems that we subscribe to with this email already. So we, we filter out some LinkedIn emails and Indeed emails um, just so we're not auto-responding to those people that don't want it. Um, and then if yes, so if, if this is all successful, we are going to reply to the email, like we said, and say thanks for reaching out. We'll review and get back to you and we can actually grab the attachments from that. And then we can start and wait for an approval. So this is what I was talking about where we say, this person may or may not be a good fit. So we'll just give it a once over and say, does this person fill the need that we, we have right now? And do we wanna to talk to them? So we create an approval that says, uh, do we wanna add them to the candidates list? And then I get an email there and it will create an approval for me to say okay. And then we can wait on that and say, let's create an item in the list that we were talking about. So a couple of those fields get filled out automatically based on when they contacted us. We wanna keep track of how long it took us to reach out to them and whatnot, and then give some default values for uh, what state they're in and the, the process and whatnot. So that's just a quick look at what we've done just to give you a peek at the, the list itself. Here's some, some dummy data that you can get an idea of what it looks like to see content in this way. So like I said, there's different uh, filters that we can add. So response needed. So this says, hey, are, are there people that we need to reach out to? Uh, do we have up, upcoming interviews? So it'll look, say, which ones are in, are in the future, right? So. That'll give you a good idea as to what uh, the, is capable in this list. So like I said, the possibilities are practically endless here. If you have a process that you're tired of talking to all the different third party websites out there and keeping track of everything all dispersed, give this a try. Try to create a process that works well for you. Integrate different avenues for candidates to get into your funnel and then keep track of them in whatever way makes sense for you. One thing I wanted to make you aware of before you go is that we actually have a podcast that is called Make Others Successful. It's very similar to this kind of content, but in a longer form. So if you want to hear some discussion around these topics and modernizing your workplace, you might want to go check that out. Another thing is our learning center on our website. So we've cataloged all the stuff that we've created on our site, categorized it, gave it different topics, and you can go browse that and learn a little bit more about modernizing your workplace there. And lastly, some of the time we get questions on these YouTube videos, and we want to do our best to answer every one, but sometimes it's hard with just text in a YouTube comment, and it's easier to have a conversation about it. So we've opened our doors with open office hours. We run those every first Wednesday of the month where you can come in, ask your questions, we'll explain them live, and then if we need further clarification, we can actually take you on stage, talk to you, and help you get over whatever hump that you're seeing and uh, need help with. So we'll leave a link to all those in the description below, and feel free to check those out. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.